Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to your Java series. I've been cranking through these videos. It's now one in the morning, so I'm getting a little tired. So apologies if my voice is like, or something like that. Please be sure to check out our sponsor before we get started, because this video is going to be pretty awesome. And you know, yeah. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, so, so far we've talked about using these lists. We talked about how to print them, but you're not always going to want to just print the entire thing like this. You might want to iterate through each element so you can work with that element. So I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do that with the for loop, and then we'll go into quote for each loop, which we'll get into that in the next videos. So let's do a for loop, and this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to get rid of this line, and I'm going to get rid of this line. All right, so to iterate through this, we'll just start with a normal for loop, and the value we're going to need is actually grades dot size. And this is going to return the number of elements in this list. This is gonna be important for us because that's how we can dynamically tell the for loop to stop. So what we'll do is we'll say for int i equals zero, i is less than grades dot size. And that's a method, i plus plus. All right, so this is the basic way to do it. And then all you gotta do is say grades dot get, pass in the index, which is i. Then we can just put that in some output. Boom, that's how you do it. Let's run this, see what we get. And you see we have 53263, three, which is exactly what we have up here. Now, you're not always just going to use the for loop to get the values and output them. You might do something with them. So for example, you could say grades.set, and we're gonna pass in the index of the element we're working with. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take that value and multiply it by two. So it's gonna get the value, it's gonna multiply it by two, and then it's going to set it to the position i, which is actually where it came from, so it should replace the original value. So, a little complicated, but it should work. Let's run and see what we get. We get 10, 6, 4, 12, and 6, which is in fact twice this array. Well, at least each number is twice as large. All right, so that's some basic work with the for loop. You can do all kinds of crazy things with it. Let's see some creative you can do. Maybe put uh, a cool thing in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out that next video because we're going to get into a new type of loop, which you definitely want to know how to do. All right, I'll see you then. And don't forget to subscribe.